Hi guys! That's so cheesy though! I'm not having that on my jealous. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to be doing a video on medicine versus dentistry. It's been a really highly requested video and I thought, you know, I can't just do this video by myself because I just study dentistry. So we've got a special guest today. Hi. Miss Leona Richards. Um, I'll let her introduce herself actually. So who are you? So, <laughs> you're so rude. Anyway, my name is Leona and I go to the University of Bristol and I'm currently a fourth year medical student. So. Mm -hmm. So she'll be giving you an insight into medicine, the ups, the downs, whether it's worth it or not. Um, and you guys know I'm Yuande, I'm going into my final year of dental school now. Ooh, Ooh, it. Pray for me, pray for me. <laughs> but yeah, so yeah, so I'll be telling you guys a bit about dentistry. Um, yeah, so first up, first question is, why did we choose our subject? So, yeah. So, why medicine? This is like flashbacks to interviews. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, literally, this is the first question they asked you. Literally. They're like... Oh my gosh, okay, so why medicine? Well, for me, it was, I was one of those annoying people, like, you know when you meet people who mm. want to go into these, like, healthcare professional roles, mm. who are like, oh, I've always just wanted to do it from the day yeah. I was young. And I know, like, <laughs> when you're writing your, board. literally, <laughs> when you're writing your personal statement, or, like, applying to medicine, they always tell you, never say that, never start with those things. Yeah. And I always used to find it hard, because I was like, genuinely, though, <laughs> when I, like, when I was younger, people used to ask me, which one of you when you grow up, we used to be like, I want to be a doctor. Mm. <laughs> like, it was it's just the so truth, cool. It's the truth. Exactly, it was just so cool. And I think, obviously, like, having that influence from growing up in an African household where they're like, you can either become a doctor or an engineer. <laughs> I was like, well, them. which one of those, you know, like looks looks good and sounds good to me and a doctor was it. And I just mm. got it from when I was young. So I always had it at the back of my head when I was in school, like secondary school, mm. that oh, um, being a doctor is an option for me. Like that's what I'd like, like, like to look into and stuff. Mm. And so when it came to organizing work experience, when yeah. you know, your school was like, oh, start to focus on, you know, um, what you guys want to do for university and stuff. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, well, the main thing that I can think of is um, going into um, medicine and becoming mm -hmm. a doctor. So I was like, what work experience do I need for that? And, you know, my school were like, try and get work experience in a hospital yeah. or like in a caring environment and see mm -hmm. how that works out for you. So I did that. You know, I got some volunteering work experience in my local hospital, Queen Elizabeth. Yeah, shout <laughs> And <out. laughs> um, I would go and volunteer there like once a week in the afternoon. Yeah. She, she, she was active. She yeah. Was active. <laughs> well, after school, she Active go. in the first few months and then I slowed down afterwards. <laughs> but, you know, shh, don't tell anyone. <laughs> um, and that was really good for me because I genuinely got to like, you know, see yeah, the role of definitely. the doctor, see how they fit in in the hospital, mm -hmm. see their kind of responsibility and how it's different from those who are doing nursing mm -hmm. and those who are like physiotherapy therapist and dietitian so medicine was something you knew there was no other option medicine yeah I think doing that kind of work experience where you are faced with all the other healthcare professional roles yeah. and you're able to see all of them and compare them with each other is kind of the best work experience yeah because I knew I definitely wanted to be in some kind of healthcare professional role but yeah. deciding which one because I was really open to be like oh if I go there and I actually prefer the role of a nurse like then I'm okay to go and yeah. be a nurse that's true but then I went there and I was like actually no for me nursing is not quite what I wanted yeah. I was like, I actually want to be more of a doctor, if anything. Mm -hmm. And so that was really like the main turning point for me, the thing that solidified it. Because, yeah. you know, I saw all the healthcare professionals, saw all their roles and responsibilities. And I was like, I see myself in the role of a doctor. Yeah. So that's why I wanted to go for it. And I spoke to the doctors themselves. And, you know, I was like, do you enjoy your job? What yeah. is it rewarding that? And, you know, they told me loads of stuff. And I just read online about it. You know, yeah. I read loads of blogs by doctors and stuff. Do and your research, guys. It's important. Yeah, exactly. Because so people will say, oh, be a doctor. But it's not like, if yeah. you're not passionate about it, if you're not going Definitely. to enjoy it, then there's no point. Yeah, and I think for someone like me, who literally, like, I had no doctors in my family. My mum, like, knew no, no doctors dentist. or anything yeah. like that. So I really had to go out of my way to find out all the information I could. You yeah. know, I remember I was writing to my GP, like, please, can you let me go and have life experience in your GP? And, like, they wouldn't reply and I'm like, I can write to this it's person, tough. please, can I do this? It's tough. It's tough. Exactly. But um, yeah, and I think for me, so basically why I wanted to do it, I, you know, <laughs> I'm I, so sure. Exactly, I actually did it. <laughs> exactly why I wanted to do it is um, I did my work experience and mm -hmm. I saw a whole range of healthcare professionals working and I was like, I see myself more in the role of a doctor than mm. anything else. 
And that's just why I wanted to do it really. Ooh. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so me, okay, I'm opposite of Leona. I didn't know what I wanted to do. Like I didn't know I wanted to be a dentist straight away. Like yeah. I had a long process I was just deciding like, okay, Yuandi, what do you actually want to do with your life? I had to really just look at what I was good at and what I was interested in. Yeah. So throughout like secondary school, six school, I've always been good at like science, like yeah. biology, chemistry. Yeah. Um, she loved her biology. <laughs> <laughs> We're in the same biology. Class. Literally, you're <laughs> loving it. So yeah, so I just looked at where my strengths lied and um, I also knew that I was really good at like, well, I loved communicating with people. I just <laughs> loved working with people. So I knew I wanted to do something that involved like talking to people on a day-to-day -day basis. Like yeah. I didn't want to just be in like an office by myself. Like yeah. that's not me. Um, so I've done a bit of research looking into it and I came across dentistry and I was like, hmm, this sounds quite interesting. I, after like, I looked at air hostess, I thought I wanted to be an air hostess yeah. and I thought... Did you actually? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so I, like, I can't yeah, imagine you yeah, as an You can talk to people on a day to day basis, yeah. but I was like, mm, But you don't need to travel that much, yeah. literally. So, yeah, I thought I wanted to be a singer. Well, I can't think Yeah, about, she wanted to I sing. I wanted to be a singer. I thought I was going to be the next one. You had an album say. out and everything, literally, on her birthday. She was like, guys, I think this album. This is not meant to say this on YouTube. This is like. That was so anyway. funny. I remember the album. Oh my gosh, this album anyway, was like, Anyway. Comment down below. <laughs> If you wanted to release this album on YouTube, guys, guys, okay. Yeah. Back to dentistry. So yeah, I thought I was gonna be a singer, but she did. Yeah, I slowly realised that yeah, I don't think I can do that. <laughs> um, so yeah, I came across dentistry, oh my gosh. and like Leona, I had done some work experience. Like going back to work experience, I feel like work experience is key in deciding what you want to do because mm -hmm. you actually get to be in that environment, yeah. be around dentists. And I saw the things they were doing, I saw the impact it was having. Because people are like, oh, like, it's just teeth. Like, what kind of impact can you have in someone's life by just, like, sorting out their teeth? Mm -hmm. But you don't know. Like, some people think it really affects their confidence and they can't even leave the house because they don't like their smile. And just in general, I just thought, you know what, this is a profession that I can definitely see myself in. And, yeah, I just really enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. And from that moment after work experience, I was really determined. I was like, you know what, I'm going to focus on doing dentistry. This is actually what I want to do. And yeah, it wasn't an easy journey. I'm not going to go into all of that now. But if you want to find out about my whole process, because I had to like apply twice. If you want to find out my process, I've got a video where I explain everything. So you can check that out. But yeah, eventually I got there. And yeah, I'm here now. So yeah, that's how it's situation. So now the application process is... Um, what's the question? What is the difference between the application process between medicine and dentistry? Okay. I think they're quite similar, yeah. to be fair. Yeah. Um, I know for medicine, so your GCSEs do matter. Yeah. So that's when you have to kind of start thinking about it. Yeah. So um, I, I wrote it down, the requirements. You need seven GCSEs at grade A to C, which is now nine to four because they've changed the GCSEs. Um, so yeah, back in our day, we all need, we needed like, we needed an A in. I think, yeah, you were aiming for A's and at least biology, chemistry and physics and your yeah. sciences and then um, maths and English as well. Yeah. Um, but I know for sure that in terms of GCSE requirements for medicine, it differs um, according to which unis that you go to. Yeah. So um, make sure you definitely do a lot of research in terms of um, the requirements for the specific universities yeah. that you're applying to, because some universities really, really focus on the GCSEs and they'll require like a certain number of A stars for you yeah. in order, from you in order um, for you, to, for you do, to qualify for yeah. an interview, for example. Whereas like other universities like only just require passes from you and yeah. um, so then do your give research, look at the universities, yeah. whether you're considering medicine or dentistry. But yeah. in terms of the requirements, the grades are pretty much the same. So yeah. people often have the misconception that it's easier to get into dentistry. But that's not the case because I've like there was some people in our sixth form where they're like, oh, I'm not going to do medicine, I'm just going to do dentistry. But mm -hmm. it's the same. You need the same grades. So yeah. It's not like you need high grades of the other. So yeah. So GCSEs and then A levels. So A levels, you're also still looking at at least three A's. But yeah. um, other universities offer slightly lower, and other universities also offer slightly higher. Yeah. And once again, do your research and find out um, which universities require what. Mm -hmm. And if you're not doing A levels, we did the IB. So yeah. yeah. We've worked on the IB. As well. um, yeah, so. And yeah. also make sure for which subjects they require those grades in because I think a lot of universities need you to at least study chemistry mm -hmm. and, uh, and 
not biology. a lot of them need biology okay for so medicine that is i don't know if it dentistry. differs with university yeah. but generally it's the same for medicine and yeah dentistry. so for medicine chemistry is more important than biology which is a really funny one because everyone needs to think biology is more important i still don't know it's why strange. um but yeah so you find that there are people who get let in who have only done chemistry and physics and that's enough for yeah them. Um, but mainly so you need to have at least two sciences yeah mainly, so. including in maths yeah um uk cat so we both have to do uk cat yeah so <laughs> most universities now if i think not all um ask for uk cat if yeah. when you're studying medicine when i applied they did it if you don't know what uk cat is if it's you're the considering... UK now. oh it's changed yeah it's uk but it's like a clinical aptitude test basically yeah. so you have like different sections where you have to so it's just like one step before the interview i think this is where they just filter people out depending on what grades you get um what score you get from the uk cat yeah. Um, so it's like an aptitude test, um, kind of like non-verbal reasoning, verbal reasoning. Uh, there's a situational judgment um, part of uh, in it as well. There's um, comprehension. Yeah. So like, it's a range of different things. I absolutely hated it. <laughs> it was Mate, like when I think back so to UK horrible. Cat, it actually gives me nightmares. Literally. I literally called the after my UK like, It was so <laughs> it's horrible. So it's done, it's done. But like, was... I think my biggest advice is practice. Yeah. I only left a month for me to do practice and I got a book and I was just doing practice questions and that wasn't enough for me. A month wasn't yeah. enough. Pra like, give yourself enough time, at least, you know, like months in advance before yeah. the, the test date. So you just get used to the style of questions because the whole, where it catches you out is because you don't really do those kind of questions in school. No, I was so clever different. in school in terms of like, you know, book smart, you know, getting those things right. But when it yeah. came to the UK cat, it just threw me off because I just wasn't it's used crazy. to doing tests like that. Yeah. Even the fact that you have to do the, the exam online itself is a bit more different to like mm. the other like written exams that you normally yeah, sit yeah, down. Yeah, yeah. So it's just all about practice. The more you yeah. practice, the, the more you, you recognise certain patterns, you recognise how the questions are asked, what you're supposed to answer, you get better at like doing it at the time. Mm -hmm. And doing your practices online as well, you just get more used to the whole setting. Yeah. But yeah, UK CAT is something that you're going to have to do, whether yeah. you're choosing dentistry or medicine. Yeah. And then from there you get your interviews. Um, the interview format, it could either be panel or MMI. Yeah, before for interviews, some universities for medicine ask for a BMAT but exam. Yeah, you can have so um, there's a handful of universities in the UK which ask you to sit something called the BMAT exam, mm -hmm. which is different from the UK CAT in that it's more kind of like your school exams that you would have been yeah. doing in sixth form. So it has, you know, it's a mixture of like biology, chemistry, mm -hmm. physics, and then you have like an essay section at the end. Yeah. So um, a handful of universities ask for that. Mm -hmm. Sometimes alongside the UK CAT or sometimes without the UK CAT. Yeah. And once again, it's um, up to you to go and research and find that out. And the difference between the UK, the UCAT and the BMAT is that the BMAT is usually sat after you've um, given your application. Yeah. So um, one of the nice things about the UCAT is that you can sit it before you put your application in. Yeah. And then when you get your results, you can make a decision about um, whether or not you want to apply to certain universities if you have the certain UCAT um, score that they require you mm -hmm. to, because okay. some universities will be like, oh, um, we only give interviews to people who have 700 million yeah. or something like that. And you're like, okay, well, I have 650, so there's no point mm. applying that. So you know before. Exactly, yeah. so you don't have to like, waste the space. Yeah. Whereas for like the BMAT, you don't get your, you don't get to sit it until after you've sent your application in. So it's yeah, more so. a bit of a gamble, you know. But if you think that, you know, you are more of a book smart person yeah. and you know, you're used to doing that kind of revision and work and you'll be okay sitting that exam and go for it, you know, yeah. go ahead and sit it because um, you just never, you never really tell yeah. about it. And like with dentistry as well, I think there's only mainly one uni that does it. Well, back when I was doing it, it was many leads that asked for BMAT, but mostly it's UK CAT. So yeah, that's, that's it with the application process. Um, and, and then the interviews you were saying? The interviews, so yeah, the interviews with medicine and dentistry, they both have similar interview styles. It's either going to be MMI, which is like when you have, it's like speed dating, so you have lots of different um, stations and they can ask you to do, ask different questions. So one station could be like, why dentistry? Another station, well, we have that origami section because with dentistry, you're, it's quite like practical. So you need like manual dexterity, that's what they call it. It just means you use your hands a lot. So they had a station where you had to like do origami just so they could like in like what five minutes or something just so they could see how your practical skills are like so you could have different stations and it's quite it was it was quite interesting but yeah so it's either MMI or panel 
with better sellers at the cinema? Yeah, so we have um, traditional style interviews, which are, as I said, panel oh, interviews. Yeah. So you walk in, there's about like three, four people um, sitting opposite you and they just ask you a series of questions from like, why medicine? Why this university? What work experience have you done? Extracurricular activities, yeah. XYZ, whatever. And then you also have the yeah, MMIs, as you were saying, where the different sections. Mm-hmm. Um, I sat both exams when I was applying. Um, both exams. <laughs> I sat both. I um, got in two interviews, and each interview, one interview had MMI and one interview had traditional. So I sat for both of the oh, wow. different styles. So she knows. Um, <laughs> and personally, it's a bit weird when I tell people this. I honestly prefer the MMI more oh. because you prepare so much for an interview. And I feel like in a traditional interview, they only ask you like 10% of what you know, mm. whereas the MMI is designed to kind of like get the whole idea of you as like an all round person. Yeah, so yeah, even yeah. if you fail in one section, you're not really strong in one section, you can be super, super strong in another section. That's true. And because they in- individually mark you on each station, it's a different it's person. Different, yeah. marking so you, you get like, like a, just it's almost like a fresh start. Exactly, time. yeah. Right. Whereas like in the traditional interview, like if I said, if I messed something up at the beginning, I'm yeah. like so nervous about it till the end. And I'm yeah. just like, oh, now you guys are thinking about what I said at the beginning. Yeah, so and, it can be you know, quite... it's just ruined. Or... <laughs> it's like, you know when you do a driving test and then you make the mistake and then you I still won. have to continue the whole... <laughs> you still have to do the whole thing. The whole thing. And you're like, I never felt already. Why yeah, am I doing so... this now? <laughs> it depends on you. Some people might prefer traditional interviews, yeah. some people might prefer MMIs, complete depends on you. But yeah, yeah with medicine and dentistry, it's something that you're going to have to do if you mm. want to get in. 